Hello and welcome to a new way to museum at the Sternberg Museum. I am Alicia and I am the naturalist here, so I get to take care of all of our live animals. So today we are going to talk about amphibians. So to start off, we're going to clarify what is an amphibian. So a lot of time reptiles and amphibians do get mixed up, um, but there are some very big differences between them. So amphibians are those slimy creatures that you or I are thinking of. Snakes are not slimy, frogs are slimy. So amphibians are things like frogs, salamanders, toads, and those kind of things. So obviously one big difference is that amphibians are slimy. So they have this wet skin, and that means that they have to stay near a water source in some sort. So frogs you obviously see at the lake, on rivers, all that stuff, and same with salamanders. So if they're not specifically by a water source, they're typically in very moist areas, they're underground, and stuff like that. So another thing about amphibians is their babies aren't just tiny little versions of themselves. So their babies are actually typically aquatic. So amphibians will lay their eggs in or by water, and when they hatch, they are typically tadpoles. So obviously a tadpole, you're thinking about a frog. So we are going to start by talking about frogs. So we do have a couple frogs here. Um, one of my favorite is our tree frogs. Favorite for obvious reasons, they are very good jumpers and they are very good at just being awesome. So I do have a couple tree frogs here. <coughs> so I'll see if I can keep handle on them. So the first one I'm gonna bring out is a very fat tree frog. So he's a great tree frog. <laughs> we'll see if I can keep handle on him as he pees everywhere. So he's a very fat tree frog, and I've actually only had him since about September. So he came to me this fat. So I typically have very fat toads because all they do in captivity is eat. He is not fat because of me. So I would like to to note that. So he's a gray tree frog. They are pretty common here in Kansas. He is very cool. So obviously, <laughs> that was pathetic. Obviously he is doing a pretty good job at jumping as we can see. So he has these great big jumping legs and he likes to use them. So he is very sticky. So obviously he could climb straight up a tree or a wall. He's got nice pads on his toes to help him do that. So we only have one of him, even though they are pretty common. I only have one. I do have I'm just going to hang out with the other frog. I do have three green tree frogs. So green tree frogs can be gray or they can be green. So they're very cool as well. Just kind of flings himself. There you go. <laughs> so obviously he's slimy and I'm having a hard time getting hold of him. So that was just a little hop. So he has the same really good sticky feet. He can climb up stuff. Um, he is very green right now. They have a nice light in their cage. If it was dark, he would get a little bit darker, so he can change his skin color to blend in just a little bit better. That was very good. I hope we, you know, do slow-mo of you jumping, huh? So frogs are awesome. I do also have poison dart frogs um, and leopard frogs. Woo. So frogs, when they lay their eggs, they are laying them in water, and they are just a cluster. So that is one difference that they have with toads. So I do have a toad here with us, and he is my baby, and he is fat. But he is definitely not the fattest toad I have. So this, hi, is a Sonoran Desert Toad. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. It's horrible. Hi. Oh, goodness. Okay, so this is a Sonoran Desert Toad. I actually have three of these guys, and he is the only male. My other two are females. So this is Greedo. I have a Yoda. I didn't know it was a girl when I named it. And as a Bulba. So they have a theme. So Greedo is much smaller than the females, which is typical. The males are typically smaller. So no Desert Toads are also called Colorado River Toads. So you're seeing some differences between this toad and the frogs we have. And one that I always like to point out is that he's got these warts all over him. So he's not quite as slimy. He is a little bit more dry. You can see that he has sand on his 
head he likes to bury in sand. So he has these warts. So these warts are actually where the myth that if you get peed on by a toad, you're going to get warts. So that's not true. That is a myth. It comes from the fact that their skin is covered in warts. And that's actually how you can tell the difference between a lot of species of toads is by how many warts they have per dot <laughs> and all that fun stuff. So another big difference is that, and this is my favorite difference because Sonoran desert toads like to eat my fingers a lot. Toads do not have teeth. So if he eats my finger, it's just really funny feeling. It's a little slimy and gross. He's not hurting me in any way. But frogs do have teeth. So when my finger gets ate by a bullfrog, he does have teeth he can cut me with. So, you know, frogs are more dangerous. Woohoo. Except for the fact that this big old guy right here is highly poisonous. So all frogs are poisonous. You might know this if your dog or cat has ever ate a frog. I mean a toad. I hope you have it and they start foaming at the mouth. So it's typically not gonna kill them, it's just really gross. The toads just do it so that whatever predator lets go of them. So it's just a really good way to protect themselves. But Sonoran desert toads are highly poisonous. So if a dog tried to eat this guy, it could actually kill them. So luckily these aren't found around here in Kansas, so all of our dogs are, and cats are safe. But um, yes, they are typically poisonous. So you see, these big glands on his head, those are called the paratoid glands. And that is actually where the poison is coming from. So also you can see how he's breathing. So when you think of a frog and their little ribbits, you can see their whole bottom of their mouth going and going and going. So that is actually how he is breathing. <coughs> so it's called the buchler, buchler pumping. And so what he's doing is as he moves his face down, he's bringing air in from the outside as well as bringing air from his lungs into his mouth, and then when it goes back up, he's pushing it back out and back to his lungs. So that is how they are breathing. So when they are doing that, they're not trying to talk to us. Though he usually does talk to me, so I wish he would. He likes to give me nice warnings because he is a male. He will tell me, hm, I'm done with you, please leave me alone. But typically, as long as I give him nice lots of food, he will tolerate me pretty well. So that is our beautiful toad. We do have a couple more toads here, but none is quite as big as they are. Oh, goodness. So obviously, besides frogs and toads, um, there are other amphibians such as salamanders. So here in Kansas, um, our state amphibian is actually the tiger salamander, and we have two of them here. So we have chompers and stompers, so really great names. <laughs> chompers likes to bite. <laughs> um, he will bite his handlers, he will bite the other salamander, but his teeth are so tiny they don't do anything, so it's not really a big deal. Whereas Chomper bites the other um, salamander stompers. Stomper has learned just to push his head down by stepping on them, so they have a great relationship. So really fun names. So salamanders, um, they are obviously an amphibian. So they don't quite look like tadpoles when they are born. They have very obvious gills. So um, tadpoles, I mean, Salamanders obviously have to start in water, just like every other amphibian, and they have these really awesome gills that they will eventually lose as they grow legs and grow lungs, and then they leave the water. So sometimes you'll see salamanders um, around big bodies of water. Our salamanders personally love to swim. Other times you'll just find them in moist areas where there isn't really a body of water, but it's really moist. So really cool things about salamanders is that they can keep their lungs their entire life. If there was a situation where they couldn't get out of the water, they would keep their lungs, and they, I mean their gills, and they would never need to lungs because they would just stay aquatic. And there are some salamanders, like our sirens, that have their gills all the time. So the sirens look just like regular salamanders, except for they don't have back legs, and they swim really well. And there's also things like um, mud puppies, as well as oxalotls, that will keep their um, gills their entire life so that they can stay in water. So that's really cool um, <coughs> way of adaptation. We have tried to keep aquatic salamanders here, but they always tend to eventually go up onto land because they can. So chompers and stompers, we've only had them for a little bit. Um, they've grown on us right away because they just love to eat. So. Um, 
We also have our sirens downstairs. So our sirens are with a bunch of other animals. Um, as you can see, they, they do have their gills. They have their tiny little front legs and no back legs, and they kind of look like eels. So people always think that we have eels, but they are amphibians. Um, they have this tiny little mouse, and so they typically eat worms that they would find in the sand. Um, our sirens eat anything and everything you put in front of their faces, which is very typical of amphibians. If they think it's food, they're going to try to eat it, which is why we often get bit and half swallowed by our amphibians, which is wonderful. I personally love it. So our sirens are very cool. Um, they're lesser sirens. There are other types of sirens. Um, they don't do a whole lot besides, you know, swim around. They do have babies just the way as any other amphibian would, except for their babies are just going to stay aquatic as well. So that is amphibians, um, pretty easy, you know, they're very cool, um, they are slimy, and I personally love the slimy more than the dry, so it's okay, you know, I need to wash my hands now. <laughs> but that is all I have for you guys today, so thank you for joining me, and I hope you had fun. Thank you. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.